What's going on today, guys? We're coming at you with a video on our top five kitchen appliances. Yep. Not necessarily top five, but like top five kind of expensive ones that maybe you haven't heard of before. Let's go in reverse order. Of like worst to best? Number five. The Instant Pot. <laughs> We don't use it for a ton, but what we do use it for primarily on a weekly basis is to make homemade bone broth and it makes it in like three to four hours. It's super easy to do and always like delicious and gelatinous. So it comes out perfect every time. It was hard for me to figure out how to use this. So I just YouTubed everything when I wanted to figure out how to use it for certain things. And if you have an Instant Pot at home and really like it, we also use it for slow cooking. So it's like a combination slow cooker and Instant Pot like pressure cooker in one. And we have a slow cooker ebook we'll link below you can check that out and we have a ton of recipes to make in this that are super delicious it's really clunky and big but it's definitely worth it because we use it to make bone broth which would normally take like 24 to 48 hours on the stovetop but you can do it in like three to four hours you can steam things so like it would be good for steaming veggies you can also do hard-boiled eggs which would be great because you can do hard-boiled eggs in bulk if you cook something slow cooker wise and you take off the lid saute you can like saute any meats and if there's like a gravy, just add in some xanthan gum and you can thicken it up. So it works as like um, a stove top as well as an Instant Pot slow cooker combo. And then one thing I do wanna say is there's this seal in here. So you can buy a couple of these, but every time we use it, we'll just make sure we take this out and wash it because it really just soaks up whatever you're cooking in there and absorbs the smell, so we just like to wash it. And basically the only thing we use it for is bone broth. Sometimes like soups and stuff. We use it more as the crock pot yeah. and not as like the actual Instant Pot pressure cooker. A lot of people seem to love it. Yes, but we don't use it that often. We just cook everything on the stovetop. I think it's like 90 bucks maybe, right? 90 bucks for an Instant Pot. Would I buy it? We did. We did. I would buy I it just it, for making bone broth. It's worth it to me. Number four, the Traeger smoker pellet grill thing we have. So I didn't really know much about these at all until we got one. Okay, so it's electric. You gotta plug it in. It's more like a smoker than it is a grill, I would say. This is a big boy right here. I think this model costs about $1,200, but they have way smaller ones. I think the cheapest is like around $500. It takes these wood pellets and it feeds them in to the bottom here and it starts smoking and then you can set the temperature dial. What I typically do and what I'm gonna do for these ribs is we're gonna start it at 225 for like two or three hours. And then just for the last hour or like 30 minutes even, we're gonna turn it up to like 350. This is, uh, this will get you like, I wanna say six to eight solid grill sessions and it costs 20 bucks. So pretty affordable. So we just took these off the grill. They were on for like three hours total. I don't know if you'll be able to see the smoke ring on these ribs, but when I did a brisket before, there was like an amazing smoke ring. Look at that. You can't really see much, maybe like a little bit on the edge. So these are becoming more and more popular. Yeah, so the egg, the green egg, you've probably heard of that. I don't know exactly how a green egg works. I think it's a little different, but this is like a side loaded pellet grill. And grill is deceiving because it's not a grill. It's a smoker. It's a smoker. And so I was really excited. And then as soon as I find out, found out we can't like grill steaks, grill burgers. You can, not, but it's not the best for It's it. not going to give you a grill charred flavor that you're looking for with grilled yeah. foods. So it's a smoker. I mean, and luckily if I had this, if I had the trigger on my own, I would never use it. I use it like maybe once a week or so. Yeah, because we'll smoke like a big piece of meat. It's nice for the weekends. You make like ribs or wings. You just, it takes six hours and then you're like waiting all day and then it's ready at dinner time. But yeah, the downside is it's not great for like, hey, I want to just cook a steak really high temperature, get a nice char on it in 20 minutes. And they're expensive. They're okay. like five or 600 bucks. The one that we have there is like 1200. So would I get it again? I would get the cheaper version. If we didn't have one, I probably wouldn't push to get one. I would want to just get a real grill. I would say it can't be your only grill. This has to be grill number two. Yeah. You need a normal, just standard grill. Yeah, or if it's number one, definitely get another grill. Number three, a Vitamix blender. I already have it loaded up with bulletproof coffee stuff. I love it. You love it? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was really expensive and I was upset when we were buying it because you wanted it, yeah. but now I'm glad we have it. It is really expensive. It's about 300 bucks, I think. Yeah. So I've always like wanted one of these because I've made smoothies and just like bulletproof coffee and stuff basically my entire life. And I'm always like, once I make it, I'm getting a Vitamix. And honestly, I haven't been that impressed with it. It's a good blender, but do I think it's worth $300 when there's like high powered ninja blenders and stuff for like 60? I feel like I might just rather have one of those. 
does. It basically blends everything. The, the one downside is see how big this, just the volume of this thing is. Like we've tried making peanut butter in it and you literally need like four pounds of peanuts or else it will just get stuck around the edges and it won't make peanut butter. I'd give it like, a solid endorsement. People seem to love it. That's the thing. That's why I was sold on it because everyone's like, got a Vitamix. It's changed my life. But I think a lot of that is you spent $300 on a blender. You have to pretend it changed your life. So uh, this costs us $300. I don't think it changed my life. Either way, I, we just use a blender daily. So we would recommend like having a blender because you can do so many things in it besides bulletproof coffee. So you can do bulletproof coffee, smoothies, nut butters. You can do um, soups. You can make acai bowls. You can make acai bowls. And I guess one nice thing about this Vitamix is when you get all of the cheaper blenders, they put like a bunch of gadgets on here to make you think it's good where it like, you know, it pulses and it has like a 60 second cycle where they it goes fast. They make hard-boiled eggs. Yeah, exactly. This is very basic. Start and then power. And then if you want to pulse, you can do that. People will tell you this is the holy grail of blenders. And I've had my fair share of blenders. Me too. I'm not gonna say it's the best thing I've ever bought. And like so many people that buy the Vitamix, they just love it to death. They'll tell yeah. you about it all the time. They're like Vitamix evangelists. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. If you have 300 bucks to blow on a blender, it's probably the best blender you can get for the money. Right. But I think if you're on any kind of budget, I would just go with the cheaper one. Number two. Two. Jewel. A sous vide. Yeah. A sous vide, an immersion circulator. I don't know. There's a lot of names for these things, but this is a jewel. So that's the only one I can really speak on. I've never tried the other ones. Basically what this thing is, is it holds water at a very specific temperature for extended periods of time. We've had this for about a year, right? Yeah. For me, it's worth the money just for hard boiling eggs because you get the most perfectly cooked whites with the yolk still being super soft for steaks. It's awesome, we'll show you that too. But basically you pop the jewel into some kind of tub of water here and you just open the jewel app on your phone. And you can see on here, it has like a bunch of recipes already in here. So like if you wanna do a steak, you can just pick basic steak, uh, set temperature, you know, go rare, go like super rare. And then it'll tell you how long, depending on how thick your steak is. It's really pretty cool. I just pick the ultimate ramen eggs, but I don't want mine to be ramen eggs. So these go for eight minutes. I like to just do the ramen egg setting for 10 minutes. So here, as I click start jewel, wash the water, watch it. Boom, now it's circulating. It tells you the temperature, a little bit of whites floating around. That's okay though, that usually happens. Kaboom. It's a little over actually. But you know, pretty good, right? You don't get that gray ring around the edge. We've just pulled the steaks out of the sous vide. And look how gross they look. Yeah. This is how they're supposed to look. But this is how they're supposed to look. This is rare, okay? It's sometimes a little hard to get a good sear after I sous vide it. All right guys, the sous vide steak is done. We seared it for a couple minutes and it looks perfect. So I'm gonna slice into this. It looks a little oh. over. But as you can see, it's perfectly cooked through like the same temperature the entire way through, just with a slight sear. A jewel or any kind of sous vide, I think it has the most utility for a keto diet. Where all of these other things we're talking about, it's like, yeah, it's just like a good kitchen item to have, like an appliance. But the jewel specifically for keto is great. You can do like all the meats, right? Mm -hmm. All like we've done salmon, we've done steaks, we've done burgers. So before we got the jewel, I did a ton of research because Anova is the like the competing brand that people and it's like. It's cheaper, right? It's slightly cheaper, yeah. And it has like the um, user face, so you can like touch it. You don't have to use your phone because the jewel you need the app. But the Jewel app, I would say, is a lot better. It has recipes. Yeah, and all the reviews I read, and I read tons of articles, because it's a, it's an expensive investment. 200 bucks. The Jewel always came out on top, so we took the dive, and I would recommend it 100%. Number one, cast iron skillets. So we have all four right here. These are the ones we use. We're using two at the moment, and Lodge is the brand of all four of them. We get them on Amazon. This whole setup probably runs you like 60 bucks and they, they last forever. So you just really, you just have to make sure you like clean them after each use. Don't let them like rust over. And that's really easy. You can look that up online and figure out how to do that. But we cook all our meats, all our veggies in them. Um, we've really transitioned from using any other types of skillets to using purely cast iron skillets. 
So they are gonna be the best bang for your buck. You just really have to make sure you take care of them after each use. That's where a lot of people go wrong. The only issue I would say is they aren't really non-stick unless you really just put down a lot of like fat, lard, butter, or bacon grease. By far the best cost to benefit ratio. It's 60 bucks, you're set for life. Yeah. As far as cooking, you know, pans go. There's some downsides with them for sure. Like you can't really cook an omelet in them. And then we have like all the different sizes. Our I think my favorite is the Dutch oven because you have a lid on it yeah. so you can make like That's chilies. We use, the most. we use it the most. You can pop it in the oven. You can take off the lid. Let us know what we missed. I know a lot of people are going to say air fryer. That's something maybe we need to get. I don't know. I haven't been really like swayed to get it yet. No. Oh, I remember in college I actually had a deep fryer. That's that's absurd. <laughs> yeah, I had one of those deep fryers. You just poured like a quart of canola oil in. I would make fried chicken every single night for weeks. My teammates in college would make fun of me so much because every Sunday I would make homemade English muffins. No reason to make fun. Men aren't supposed to cook, at least not in the kitchen like baking. I made homemade pasta all the time. He did. He made that for our, our first Valentine's Day for me. People love uh, the immersion blender. We not a big fan. We rarely use it. We've used it to like make mayo a couple times and to make our chocolate truffles that are yeah. really good. And, oh, worst kitchen appliance is those little frothers, the coffee frothers. Those last like a day and then they're bent and they don't work. Yeah, immediately broken. And they don't even mix things that well. Like if you put MCT oil and you mix it with a frother, it's back to just big globs at the top in like 20 seconds. Yeah, and then we've also had the Egg Genie, which I love. The Egg Genie, we made a video on We did a on whole that. video on the Egg Genie. How embarrassing. Probably my favorite, actually, we didn't even put it in the video, is our silicone molds. We have like a million of them. Yeah. Different shapes, different sizes, muffins, mini loaves, fat bombs, yes. like, those are the best. You just pop stuff out. Don't get a KitchenAid mixer. How much are those, the KitchenAid yeah, mixers? Like 350. They're making a fortune. Actually, I don't know, because they put a lot of metal into that thing. That might be $350 worth of metal. So I think this video is gonna be five products that we use, we bought, they're kind of expensive, that we like, at least a decent amount. The worst kitchen purchase we have ever made, right here. What are you getting? You know what I'm getting. Oh yeah. This gargantuan waste of money. I know a lot of people love these. Oh my, first off, this thing literally weighs 75 pounds. This is a 75 pound dumbbell. We've used it once. We've used it twice. Twice. The, the second you know time was to use? make mashed potatoes for my stepdad. You know what we use instead of that all the time? This, which cost $12, and it's just so much more handy. It weighs like three pounds. So much lower barrier to entry. You just like pick this up, start mixing this thing. You have you to got, like wash the bowls out yeah. and the dog. It's really like a lot of work. But if you do like, for keto, it makes no sense. But for someone who's making like bread Breads. every single day. If you have a huge kitchen where you can just like leave this on the counter and it doesn't clutter stuff up, like look at our kitchen. We already, it's very cluttered. We should sell that for some Jordans. Yeah, we should. So yesterday we were debating whether Julius, he would always sit right here. The carpet would be right there. And we were debating whether he just likes sitting on the carpet or he actually likes sitting next to the stove to get food that falls because we cook really messily and like he always gets stuff. Well, we thought it was the stove, right? We thought it was the stove, but then we moved the rug over here just to see and he always lays on it over here now. 